Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So in a recent video that I posted, David Sinclair updated his supplement stack. He also mentioned that he drinks wine, which we all kind of guessed. He also mentioned that he drank whiskey. No, I probably would have a, one drink, so probably either a red wine or a whiskey at night with a salad, some cheese, a little bit, maybe a bit of shrimp, maybe some chicken if I'm eating out, but probably not often. So we all know why he probably drinks the red wine. That's down to um, the red resveratrol, but why the whiskey? Also in that video, in the comment section, I had a number of comments that got me to thinking. So I thought I would do a video which outlines some of the health benefits that may be gained by drinking whiskey and which may go some way to explaining the reason that David Sinclair chooses whiskey over say brandy, vodka or even gin. Whiskey is an alcoholic beverage that is obtained through grain distillation. The alcohol content in whiskey is between 40 and 57 percent. This qualifies it as hard liquor. For whiskey to yield any health benefits, it must be consumed in moderation and with all the necessary precautions. There are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Whiskey, indeed any alcohol, should be consumed in moderation for it to yield any health benefits. In simple terms, moderate drinking refers to a balanced level of alcohol intake, so the advantages outweigh the risks. According to the US Department of Agriculture and the 2015-2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, men should not consume more than one or two drinks a day, whereas women should only take one drink a day. Because whiskey is classed as a hard liquor and therefore should be consumed more prudently, the daily measure is 1.5 ounces, which is 44.3 milliliters, and a normal shot of whiskey is between 1.25 and 2 ounces. According to the US Department of Agriculture, 100 grams of distilled whiskey contains the following. 63.9 grams of water, 350 kcals and one kilocalorie is equal to a thousand calories. 0 0.1 grams of carbohydrates, 0 0.2 milligrams of iron, one milligram of potassium and 36 grams of alcohol. The potential health benefits of taking a wee dram should not compel non-drinkers to start drinking, nor responsible drinkers to overindulge. The principle of moderation in everything especially applies to alcohol. An excessive intake can severely harm your body and your social well-being. I think David Sinclair's one whiskey a night would fall into the category of moderation. That said, let's look at some possible benefits that may be gained from a measured intake of whiskey. Drinking whiskey may help to protect against some cognitive disorders. Indeed, all types of alcoholic beverages, including whiskey, have been shown to exhibit antioxidant properties. The antioxidant phytochemicals in whiskey positively influence GABA receptors to maintain a healthy chemical balance in our brain. This can help protect against the debilitating ramifications of depression, Alzheimer's disease, dementia and schizophrenia, but more research is needed to fully establish these claims. Drinking whiskey may also decrease the risk of heart disease. Those who engage in light to moderate drinking, and I think David Sinclair's one whiskey a night would fall into this category, tend to have a lower risk of congestive heart failure, stroke, diabetes, coronary artery disease and total mortality. Conversely, people who consume excessive amounts of alcohol are more prone to cardiovascular problems. This is common sense and more than likely the reason that David Sinclair and others specifically say they have a whiskey a night, meaning just the one. Drinking whiskey may also help control uric levels. High uric acid levels are responsible for painful conditions such as gout. This is where excessive uric acid crystallizes 
and accumulates in the joints. Some clinical studies suggest that light to moderate whiskey consumption can promote the excretion of urate through the urine. Again, I think David Sinclair's one whiskey at night would fall into the category of light to moderate whiskey consumption. So as well as having positive effects on the body, whiskey may also be the healthiest alcohol you can drink. It contains no fat and hardly any sugar or carbohydrates. It barely alters the level of sugar in your blood, making it a better choice for diabetics than other alcoholic beverages. A single whiskey contains around 90 calories compared to the standard glass of red wine, which is nearly double that at around 150 calories. The enzymes found in whiskey even help to stimulate the stomach enzymes, which help to break down our food. Amazingly, whiskey can even kill infection causing bacteria, which no other spirit can do. The medical journal Springer published a study which showed that whiskey kills common bacteria found in ice cubes, such as Staphylococcus, responsible for some forms of skin infection and food poisoning and pseudomonas, which can cause skin and lung infections. Unfortunately, we don't know if David Sinclair takes his whiskey neat or on the rocks. Let's quickly talk about the hot toddy and whether or not the whiskey actually helps. A hot toddy is an anecdotal concoction that is mostly used for relieving the symptoms of the common cold and also flu. Typically, a hot toddy is prepared by mixing lemon, honey and hot water with whiskey, but you can also use green or black tea instead of the alcohol. The immune boosting properties of this tonic are mostly attributed to the nutrients that are found in the lemon and the honey, and not, unfortunately, the whiskey. We have to talk about the dark side of drinking whiskey, unchecked. Alcohol consumption or alcohol abuse not only hampers your overall physical and mental health, but also poses an immediate risk to your safety, as well as the safety of others around you by dulling your senses and affecting your reaction time. I think it's also important to mention many long-term health problems, such as high blood pressure called hypertension, inflammation of the liver called alcoholic hepatitis, scarring of the liver tissue called cirrhosis of the liver and cardiomyopathy are attributed to long-term alcohol abuse. Alcohol can induce a temporary analgesic effect by blocking certain pain signals to the brain, but excessive dependence on alcohol for managing pain can do more harm than good and can lead to more serious complications in the long term. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I think the key thing here is moderation. And if you're someone who abstains from drinking alcohol, whether it be whiskey or another kind of drink, because you find it difficult to drink in moderation, then I don't think you should start because of the potential health benefits. And for those who do drink, you should stick to the two drinks per day for men and the one drink for ladies. And in a week, that doesn't mean nothing for six days and then seven or 14 on the seventh day. Um, now I've covered in this video some of the health benefits that may be obtained from drinking whiskey, but it may be that David Sinclair, like many others, choose to sit down at the end of a long day and enjoy a drink with friends and family around him because it's just a purely nice social activity. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.